thoughts on the uh, season at the halfway point? Uh, we're 6-0. and Can't be better than that, so uh, we're pretty pleased. How about with the way the defense is playing, everything that you envisioned it would be? Yeah, we knew Coach Brown's schemes were going to work perfectly for the type of players we had. Um, it just took a little while for us to get going you know, in fall camp, but we're, we're you know, full speed ahead and we're looking pretty good. What makes a successful third down defense? That's been so good. Uh, we have a secondary like we have and the, the scheme that Coach Brown has with the blitzes and whatnot. Um, the D-line that we have, it's, it makes for a pretty good third down defense. How can you improve on the numbers? They're so good. Uh, just get better each and every week. Um, you know, we've we got some tough games coming up, and those are the ones we're going to have to hunker down, watch more film, uh, practice a little harder, focus a little harder. Um, but when you're you know, near the top, it's kind of hard to, to advance, but you've got to keep working every day. Chris, going, uh, going back to last year during that, that shutout streak, you, and you guys were feeling pretty confident as a defense, is it similar feeling this year, even though I mean, not the same shutout streak, but still yeah. a dominant play, similar feeling? Yeah, it's, it's always enjoyable to go out there and dominate a team like we have been the last couple of weeks. <coughs> um, go out there and have fun with the, the D-line and, and, and the defensive players. Um, so it's a similar feeling. We'd like to get a little more shutouts, but uh, similar feeling. I think Kyle said Sunday night wasn't a great practice. How have you guys been since then? Uh, today was actually really good. I, I talked to Jake Butt right before practice had ended just to kind of see how the offense was playing. And he said it was their best practice of the week. And I think that was the same for us, too, on the defensive side of the ball. Um, so we're feeling pretty good. You feel like the bye week came at just the right time? Yeah, it was perfect. You know, we had uh, you know six games right off the bat, five at home, and then one away. And it was a nice break in between to get some time off, go see the family, spend some time away from football. And now we're back into it for the next six weeks, uh, ready to go. What would you do on your downtime? Uh, I was in Boston. I was with Mohurst in Boston, uh, seeing the city for the first time, which was really, really cool. So got to a little vacay. Go to the Patriots game? No, we left Saturday. But, okay. uh, we were going to go to the game in Boston on Thursday, but uh, they got swept. Okay. The Red Sox. Don Brown, recommend any spots out there for you guys? Yeah, him and him and Dave recommended a few spots. And you know, Don Brown's a legend out there. We went back to Mohurst High School, and they were saying that Coach Brown's a legend. So uh, it's cool to see that. And, have someone like that on your, on your side of the wall. How is that with feedback with Brown? Is it, have you gotten to a point where you're comfortable enough where you can kind of go back and forth and say, this worked for us and stuff? Or oh, absolutely. It... Especially series after series, we'll come back and say what's working, what's not working. Third down, pass rush stunts, um, different stunts, uh, you know, first and second down during the run. Um, so we've, we've built that relationship as a defense as a whole to come back and say, hey, coach, this is what's working, this is what's not working. And he, you know, he listens to us sometimes. Was it like that last year, or is this more with Brown? It's more open that way. Uh, I think it was. I mean, we were a little younger last year, but I think as you know, we got a lot of older guys now. He, he trusts us a little more, and if it's working, and, and we're saying what's working, and we're playing well, and we're doing what we're supposed to, I think he's going to allow us to keep doing that. You mentioned before that it took a minute for you guys to all click on what he was trying to do. What yeah. were the things that were the toughest to adjust to? Yeah, well, I think coming from you know three defenses in three years with Coach Maddie and then Coach Dirk. And then uh, Coach Brown, it's just there's a lot of plays, a lot of different similar calls, but meaning different, some or meaning different things. So just picking up the calls, um, you know, getting used to that aggressiveness, you know, almost each and every play. Um, but now, like I said, we're six weeks into it, and we're feeling pretty good. Have you seen all of his blitz concepts yet? Is there any of those different stuff things he shows that you haven't seen before? Yeah, there's some stuff that are probably be coming out in the next couple of weeks, which which excites us. And you know, we have so many in, and he pulls out new and old ones and. We have some new stuff coming in this week, so it's it's exciting to have new things each and every week. Um, you know, little tweaks here and there, but for the most part, um, it's going to be some new stuff, and we're excited about it. Monet starting to look like the Monet of old. Yeah, you know, he was he got hurt last year and then was a little banged up this year, but he's he's coming back to the old Monet, like you said. So we're excited to see what he can do. Um, you know, he just needs to get more reps, um, a little more confident in, in his in his body, um, feeling ready to, to play and, and not get banged up and not be hesitant, but. He's playing pretty well right now. Last week was time for the younger guys to, to get a lot of reps. Mm -hmm. I mean, how confident are you about you know going forward at what this line is going to look like? It's it's exciting. I, if I was a freshman, I'd be worried that I probably get any playing time <laughs> in, the, in the next couple of years with Rashawn and, and Carlo and and Juan Ford and, and Ron Johnson. Right now, those are the guys that are going to be leading the way. And you got Monet coming back and Chase, uh, Mo Hurst next year. So it's exciting to see what they're going to be able to do these next two, three, four years. Um, I'm just happy to be, you know, a part of that and help them grow as a player. And is Rashawn part of I didn't oh, yeah, Is Rashawn where you thought he would? I mean, I don't know if you had any preconceived notions. Yeah. Where he would be, but. And I think I think when you have a, the number one recruit in the nation, he's a D lineman, and 
you see what he can do athletically before the before the season started, and then he's putting it together now. Each and every week, he's getting better and better, and it's just it's exciting to see it. And uh, like I said, I'm glad to be someone that can help him along the way. Um, it's cool. You think Mohurst comes back next year? I think so. You know, he's he, he probably have the option to leave, mm -hmm. um, but knowing Mo and knowing <laughs> his expectations for himself, um, you know, we'll see what he does. But my, my gut feeling is that he'll come back and, and have an amazing year next year. Okay. Being, Go ahead. Ryan said last week that there's a different mentality with you guys on the line. That just now you guys go in expecting to make a sack as opposed to last year and it's hoping to make a sack. Can, yeah. you, can you tell that that's kind of something that's happening? I mean, how, does he, how do you evaluate that? Yeah, I mean, I think I think Ryan's correct. You know, there's there's four of us out there, three of us out there at the time, and and one of us hopefully are going to get that sack on third down. So it's it's cool to see Taco get a sack, and then you know Ryan Glasgow, who's a nose tackle, who usually doesn't. Get the opportunity to make sacks, get sacks, and me and Rashawn and Mo Hurst and Godin. So it's cool to see everyone do that. And I think when we have um, that mentality and that confidence in ourselves, that you know, the DBs are going to give us time to, to get to the quarterback. Um, you know, we just make plays. Why is it different than last year, though? I mean, you had most of the same guys, plus Willie. I mean, I think we're just more confident in our play. You know, there's some guys that, I mean, especially me last year, that's not my first time really playing more than 20 or 30 snaps a game. Um, and Taco is by far our best, best pass rusher. He had two sacks last week in the first half. Um, he's playing a lot more. Um, Glasgow's more confident in himself. Mohurst has an extraordinary get off. He's getting more snaps. So I think it's just more, more competent or more, uh, you know, confidence, more repetition in what we're doing, and, and just uh, being hungry and, and ready to go. You mentioned three different, three different defenses in three years, but you just mentioned a bunch of guys that you've played with for mm -hmm. four years, three, four years. I mean, how much of that? puts into that confidence that you're yeah. next to Ryan, you know right. Ryan, you're next to Mo, you know Mo. Like, yeah, I think that, that 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 bodes well for us when we have that trust in each other that we know that if you know the, the schemes are new to us, we'll still have that ability to play hard, play fast, and trust in each other to get our get our job done, get, get in the right gaps, and, and succeed. You ever had that before here where you look to your right or your left and you don't have any hesitation on whether that guy's going to get his job done? I think last year a little bit um, towards the end of the season, um, excluding – Glasgow, and we kind of yeah. got cashed a little bit in the run game. But when, I, when Willie and I were next to each other, and we, we knew that we were going to get the job done, it was it was comforting to, to have that feeling that if I maybe messed up, he would he would you know fill in that spot and vice versa. So um, a lot more this year than we had last year, but it's a similar feeling. So like that, just about any combination, you guys rotate a lot. Is it still yeah, kind of that I mean, way? I mean, my side's usually Godin and Mo, and I see both of them inside. Yeah. It's, it's a good feeling. And Taco and Monet and Chase and, and Glasgow all on the other side. So it's. Wherever we're at, I, I have trust in everyone. Talk about the way Mo's playing. Seems like he's reached a new level this year. Yeah, Mo has, has worked his butt off to, to become the player that he's fitting into himself. He's a he's a get off guy. He's you can call him slippery because he's he gets through the cracks. He made a good play against Rutgers last week. Um, he's just that type of player that can make big plays, quick off the ball, explosive, and that's what we need from him. But Brian, I don't think most people who haven't played nose tackle understand what, what makes one good at that and the technical intricacies. So right. what does he do that makes him have a tendency to make that? Like you said, just the, the technical aspect of being a nose tackle. You're usually getting a double team or close to a double team every single play. So when you have to play that technique, um, you're close to the center. It's coming a lot faster than on the outside, um, as Taco and I have um, the big guys up there. So he has to have his technique perfect almost in every single play, and that's what he does. The great sheets show it each and every Sunday when we come back and watch film. Um, so he's done an amazing job with his technique and, and playing as a nose tackle should. So is that like getting his hands in the right spot or footwork or what's the technique? Yeah, I mean the technique. Uh, so footwork and hands are probably the biggest thing when it comes to being a nose tackle and, and pad level. He's not the he's not the biggest nose tackle, but at the end of the day, he's, he's one of the best in the conference and, and we love to have him on our side. Are all of you guys grading out pretty well on the D-line? Yeah. Is it like a competition each week? Do you guys? Yeah. Or? So, uh, Coach and Maddie's wife gives us cookies for sacks, tackles for losses, <laughs> and there's a new one where it was highest percentage, and Ryan has gotten it probably four or five out of six weeks, the highest percentage bag of cookies. So, we're fighting for that one now. It might not be the most productive, but when you have thirty pluses and you know one minus, it's it's pretty cool too. How many cookies is that like for a good week? I think. I think the most I ever had was three bags, and there was like three dozen maybe. Wow. So 12 in each, so it's – try and pass them out to the guys in your locker room. Delano Hill usually steals them because he's right next to me, so uh, try and spread the wealth. Okay. Chocolate chip. Glasgow's already got a grandma around cooking cookies, isn't he? Yeah. His grandma cooks – she made cookies one time. They're pretty good. But, uh, you know, 
it's always nice to get those little bags with your name on it and what you did and show the, show the, show the guys next to you what you did. So uh, it's a nice little present for us when we come back on Mondays. Is it better than the helmet stickers? Uh, no, I mean, everyone gets helmet stickers, but the D-line only gets cookies. So I, think, <laughs> I think it makes it a little more special. So when you get those cookies and, you know, Dwayne knows the safety and getting next to me as, as a linebacker, they don't get those cookies for interceptions or PBUs or sack and stuff. It's kind of cool to you know, pass them some because they, they didn't get any. Put your stickers on the helmet. What's that? Put, you guys uh, differentiate differentiate yourself. Uh, Put some cookies. Yeah, on. cookie uh, cookie stickers. I don't think, <laughs> so I don't think that man would like that too much, but so we'll just stick to the edible ones. Are you only on outside now? Because when Monday wasn't in here, you were going inside a little bit, right? Yeah, I've been playing a lot of outside. At the beginning of the season, I had thought that I would be playing inside more. Um, you know, Rashawn coming in and him being the type of player that he that he is going to be. Um, and with Monet getting hurt and, you know, Glasgow with the pec still a little iffy. Gordon's had some issues and Moe's had some issues as well. So I thought I would be playing both inside and out. I'm a little bit on third down. I've been in the three tech and the nose. But for the most part, like you said, I'm outside and just, just playing. Is that them, have they given you feedback why that is? Not really. I mean, I'm just going with the flow. I can play inside, outside. Uh, but like I said, I thought a little more inside this year. But I'm playing outside and I'm having fun doing it. Chris, you mentioned.